Um, let me introduce myself to you again. I'm the Reverend Dr. Nancy Ellett Allison, and Nancy is what I'd be real happy for you to call me. Um, I am most recently from Holy Covenant United Church of Christ in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I understand we have some Tar Heels worshiping with us this morning, <laughs> so grateful to have you here on this Sunday. Um, I'm also going to introduce you to another greeting that we have in the Southern Conference of the United Church of Christ, which is from our black church tradition. So I'm going to say, for starters, I'm going to start it. If anybody knows the response, please give it. God is good all the time. All the, all the time. God is good. So let's do that again. I will say God is good. You will respond all the time, and then we'll reverse that. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. I think that is a fitting greeting on this Juneteenth Sunday as we celebrate the freeing of our African-American siblings, brothers, and sisters. So I am grateful to be in worship with you this morning. Uh, we have one announcement that I am going to share. There are many others and activities and events happening throughout the week, but our adult education Sunday school class has been wonderful. I was able to attend last week's and a uh, major part of this week's, and it's a chance for you to learn who else is in this room with you. We've at, invited several different members to share their life story, and it's a wonderful opportunity to find ways to make new connections. So I would invite you to come in. The classroom is just down the hallway from here, and it's in a glass room, so it's kind of a fishbowl. You can see it walking by, and you are welcome to come on in and join us. Yeah. Uh, for those of you that maybe this is your first time or you haven't been in a few weeks, we're in a time of sabbatical as a church. Our senior pastor, John Morgan, is enjoying a, a well-deserved opportunity to take some rest. And in uh, his stead, we have um, called Pastor Nancy, as you just met, to serve as our sabbatical supply pastor. So we have a gift for you, and I asked our vice moderator, Polly Shannon, to come and share just a little bit of uh, words from the board. Um, but on behalf of our staff, we're so grateful you're Why here. Don't sit down? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be short. Um, but we did want to give Pastor Nancy a special welcome from the board and staff. We have a, a beautiful plant for her office this summer. And Nancy, we just want to say we are so deeply appreciative to Nancy for answering the call to come and serve with us this summer and share her deep well of experience with us. So Nancy, thank you. Thank you so much. Please stand. <laughs> Hear, O oh siblings, and declare that our God is among us. We gather in response and gratitude to God's radically inclusive love for us. We come to worship the God who created all our siblings in God's image, equal in dignity and worthy of regard and care. We've come to reorient our hearts and minds to liberation. Let us worship our God together. To the God of justice, love, and peace, we lift up our hearts, minds, and voices. To our siblings with black and brown and many skin tones. To our siblings who are straight or queer, trans or non-binary, in the midst of injustice and oppression, this is still the day that God has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is still the day that God has made. You are the beloved. Liberation. I lost my face. Shouts to you. And we shall rejoice and be glad.
can be seated. It's all right to say amen, church. Amen. Remember I told you, if you're not a churchy person, you can just say right on, because that's the translation. <laughs> so if I say amen, it's okay for you to say. Amen. All right, now they warmed up for you, Pastor Nancy. We're so glad that you're here today, and thank you, Barb, for leading us in that. Uh, if you're not familiar with Lift Every Voice, that's also known as the Black National Anthem. And so it felt fitting for us to join in our siblings today as we worship uh, and celebrate freedom, freedom for each and every one of us. Wow. Yes. <laughs> All right. What are we have in church. Join me with me if you'd like to in Psalm 42, one of our readings for this morning. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon and Mount Nazar, deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves are breakers, and they've swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. This morning for our prayer, I wanna invite you to be seated in a comfortable position. You could put your feet on the floor if that uh, feels more appropriate to you. And I like to put my hand on my heart and one on my belly, and I'll just invite you in a moment to take a few breaths with me as we do that together. Let's take three breaths together. As you exhale, let your shoulders relax. Release any stress that you've carried in with you today. Fill up your lungs and feel your chest and belly expand and take in the goodness of the Lord that's waiting for you today. As you exhale, let your body relax just a little bit more into this space. Take one more deep breath and inhale all the goodness that the divine has waiting for you. God, in your mercy, we come to you today trusting that you will hear us, trusting that you will listen, trusting that if nothing else, you will feel us. Feel us like we feel ourselves right now, skin and bone, covered with cloth. As we exhale, help us to release any pretense any preconceived notion, any idea that we know exactly what to expect in this hour with you. As we fill our lungs, let us be open to surprise, open to joy, open to what it means to really, really just rest and relax in your presence. We consider today and all that it means to celebrate and to bear witness today to Juneteenth. And we acknowledge that there are many, even in our midst, who are still not free. Catalyze within us the desire 
for liberation. So much so that we don't settle for anything less in our own lives and in our own families. In these moments, I'm reminded of the poem about Jesus at the gay bar. He's here in the midst of it, right in the center of the dance floor, robes hitched up to his knees to make it easy to spin. At some point in the evening, a boy will touch the hem of his robe. And beg to be healed beg to be anything other than this. And Jesus will reach out his arms, sweat damp and weary from the dance. He'll cup the boy's face in his hand and say, my beautiful child, there is nothing in this heart of yours that ever needs to be healed. Christ, would you have that mercy on us today? Pray with me the words that we've learned together, the words you can find in your bulletin. A parent who is among us, blessed be your creation. May your kingdom become reality here on earth. May we become more interested in building your kingdom here and now than in waiting for it to come down from above. Let us share our bread with those who hunger. Let us learn to forgive as well as to receive forgiveness. Help us through times of temptation, delivering us from all evil. For ours are the eternal blessings that you pour on all your creation. Amen. Thank you, Jessica, for offering that prayer and for bringing more truth into our midst. Um, as we come to this Sunday and our scripture lesson for today, you have heard the words of Psalm 42, and they were fairly depressing. This is Mental Health Sunday, as well designated by the United Church of Christ. So I would like to also talk about that issue and raise that awareness as I read this scripture passage from Luke 8. This is Luke 8, verses 26 through 39. Then Jesus and the disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time, he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break those bonds and be driven by the demons into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there was on the hillside a large herd of swine that was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to see Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed 
and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might come with Jesus. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. As I begin this sermon, I want you to think back to the psalm Jessica read. And here is a fair paraphrase of those first verses of Psalm 42 from Jim Taylor. As a long distance swimmer struggles toward land, so I struggle toward you, Lord. I am in danger of drowning. My feet long to touch solid ground again. I have been in deep water forever. Below me the black depths wait pitilessly. Why am I so depressed? Every person in this room knows what it is to be gasping for air and wondering if now is the time to throw your hands up and sink to the bottom or the time to struggle on toward life. On this UCC Mental Health Sunday, it is fitting to recognize that whether our depression stems from a great loss, a debilitating illness, or those messed up chemical levels in our brain, it is real and it can be deadly. The wild man in our text who has no name is son to some mother and father, yet he communes only with the dead and is here simply known as the demoniac, the possessed one. Now think about when you got labeled back in high school, whether you got labeled the demon or the loser or the cheerleader. The geek, the gay guy, plain Jane, you can become that person to others and sadly, often to yourself. Whether we are trapped inside our madness, our boozing or dieting or shyness or smiling out our perfection, we have all at some time been tormented by whatever it is we consider our personal demon. We don't chain folks in graveyards anymore, but the Lane County's jail population and homelessness would more than be cut in half if all of the mentally ill persons were diagnosed and provided the care they need. We often do still attach shame, name calling, and moral failure to the various diagnoses of mental illness that are around. The National Alliance of Mental Illness puts out a fact sheet every year. They point out that one in four adults experiences a mental health problem in any given year. I won't have you count off one, two, three, four. <laughs> but it means this is true for this community of faith as well. Women are 70% more likely than men to experience depression, and young adults aged 18 to 25 are 60% more likely to have depression than we people over 50. We figured, what the heck by now? <laughs> you know? <laughs> people of color have rates of mental health disorders similar to whites, but while 40% 46% of whites have any with any mental health illness receive health care. Only 30% of blacks and 27% of Hispanics will have that same care. Now, to make this a little more concrete, think about how many kids and adults you know 
have been diagnosed with ADD or ADHD. A lot, because people talk about that. Only 4% of the adult population is being treated for ADHD, while 7% of the adult population has had at least one major depressive episode in the past year. We're more willing to talk about ADHD than we are the heavy weight of depression that pulls us downward. Dr. Kay Jamison, who is a bipolar psychologist who for years refused to stay on our medications and inched slowly towards suicide, describes depression's details. In its severe forms, depression paralyzes all of the otherwise vital forces that make us human, leaving instead a bleak, despairing, desperate, and deadened state. Life is bloodless, pulseless, and yet present enough to allow a suffocating horror and pain. All bearings are lost. All things are dark and drained of feeling. Mental illness in all its manifestation is difficult for the person experiencing the crisis and all of their family members. As parents, we shouldn't always hide our pain from our children. They need to see how we cope. Acting out, which may indeed be part of the job description of a teenager, cannot be ignored but is often more about reestablishing boundaries than anything else. What families discover is no amount of love alone can cure serious mental illness. But as certain as that is, it is also true that who we are, as we are, we are created in the image of God, held in God's love, and God's intention for each of us is a full, abundant life. Why Jessica's prayer was so important. When we are struggling for air, we seldom reach out for God's help or the help of anyone else. Too often we retreat more deeply inward, allowing the demons to do all of the shouting on our behalf. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus chooses to engage rather than ignore this troubled man. He meets him with compassion and asks his name, invites relationship. Legion is the response because the demons are so many. With a sly irony, Jesus sends the demons into a herd of pigs, that very unclean animal Jesus Jews were forbidden to eat, so why were they there to begin with? Then Jesus takes the time to sit with this man and create that kind of healing connection that nourishes each of us when we are in the presence of one who loves us dearly. From Dr. Jameson again. When I first thought of writing this book, her book is An Unquiet Mind, I conceived of it as a book about an illness of moods in the context of an individual life. As I have written it, however, it has turned out to be very much a book about love as well. Love as sustainer, as renewer, and as a protector. After each seeming death within my mind or heart, love has returned to recreate hope and restore life. God's business, our callings as followers, is all about loving the misfit and the fit miss equally into new life. The people around Legion are terrified by this healing. They've always believed that God's blessing and goodness goes to the deserving. What does it mean 
If the blessing of God is not found in the quality of people, but rest instead in the nature of a God who reaches out to all. Part of what it means is we are free from the labels, the chains, the curses that have long bound us. It is an insidious lie for any of us to believe that mental illness can be controlled by the strength of will and the help of God alone. But we are also not abandoned by our God, for ours is a transforming God. Ours is a sustaining community, deepening a relationship with God, strengthening our congregational connections are things we can each do intentionally to create a more robust self and reaching out for professional help can be life changing. Blaise Pascal wrote ages ago that we have a God-shaped vacuum within which cannot be filled by any of life's pleasures. Developing the capacity to nurture God's spirit allows us to change our self-perceptions, lower our anxiety about the things of this world, and increase both our emotional and spiritual health. health. Spirituality is the practice of the presence of God. We can do that in lots of ways. We can sing our way into hope and God's presence. We can sit in the silence of meditation and create that space within. We can practice meditative movement like Tai Chi or become a distance runner. We can tend a garden and find God's peace in that offering. Any practice of life which opens us to gratitude, mercy, and forgiveness is part of what brings us into the presence of God. Luke does not record much of what Jesus has to say to this man. Return to your home, declare what God has done for you. But they sit together long enough for people to come in from the surrounding areas and for this man to know himself as God's blessed and beloved child. He has changed his self-perception and the text concludes, so he went away proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. We too are God's beloved, but to make that an internal reality to not have that just be words that fall on our ears, we must also become and experience ourselves as God's beloved. As the Apostle Paul reminds us, it all starts in our head, finally beloved. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is commendable and worthy of praise, think on these things. Then we will be ready to address our spiritual nakedness named in his letter to the Colossians. As God's chosen, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against the other, forgive each other. Above all, clothe yourselves with love. My beloved, we are children of God. Here in this space, in times of prayer, in many other times, we also do the work of becoming children of God. We are siblings, sisters and brothers in Christ. We must become those siblings, sisters and brothers 
to one another in life. We become family to one another through encouragement and support, through faithful, sustaining relationships. Our families of choice will be places of forgiveness, nourishment, and mercy, helping us change our self-perception and knowing ourselves as God beloved, God's beloved people. Our church will be the embodiment of the beloved community if we are to be strengthened, blessed, challenged, and embraced as God's beloved. When we engage one another with integrity and trust, we have the opportunity to transform lives. When there's no congruence between our actions and our words, no congruence between the skills we are learning and the worlds in which we live, we become divided and the duplicity cripples us. Slowly but surely, as we practice the presence of God, we will find ourselves journeying toward the wholeness, the shalom, the peace of God that allows us to embrace our victories and our vulnerabilities, our strengths and our brokenness. Slowly but surely, the transformation of our lives occurs with the touch of God's healing hand. Attending to our inner life, living into the blessing of being a beloved child of God is the beginning of our life of integrity and wholeness. We are all people of relationship in this room. We are all being transformed by the light of Christ, moving in our lives, strengthening our souls so that we may trust our own inner wisdom. I pray that each of us will find the courage to speak the truth we know from within. I pray that here at First Congregational, we are creating the kind of safe spaces where the soul can come out and risk being known. I pray that this will be a place where we will tend to the needs of the broken and bound so that we may all rejoice together in the transformation of life. As the psalmist reminds us, hope in God, for we shall again praise the Holy One, our help and our Redeemer. Amen. Love is plentive and strong. 
strong it grows its fruit lay blossoms like a rose it casts a sweet and sacred spell no flower on earth can love excel when the race is long and the hills too steep our feet may fail, our hearts grow weak, yet on every hand each friend holds true all the love we need to see us through. All the Mr. Soper, oh, you got it. You read my mind. What could God do with a yogurt container? So much, so much. What if God could change lives with a yogurt container? What if somebody's day could be changed because of a yogurt container? Yesterday, I had the privilege to witness Grace Rodiger's family and many of you, her friends, and remembering her life. In fact, the flowers here on the right side of the altar, those are in remembrance of Grace. And one of the fun stories that I heard yesterday was that as creative as this woman was, she would take flowers and plant them in yogurt containers and just give them away just to brighten someone's day. And yesterday I heard stories of her creativity through yogurt containers and old cards and crafts. And Doreen Killeen has a pretty hilarious story about uh, something that was borrowed, but I won't tell you today. <laughs> but what if God could change lives with just anything that you happen to have? Now I know some of you are, are thinking, well, I don't have much. I'm not sure what God could do. I get it. That's okay. But I'm wondering if maybe this is the day or this is the season or this is the time where the Spirit is inviting you to say, what have you got? And how could it make a difference? In a moment, our ushers are going to come forward and receive an offering today. And, and many of you are already partnering with us in ministry, so thank you for that. But if you haven't yet made that decision, I want to invite you to consider that today, to consider what is it you've got? What is it that God's given you? Maybe, maybe it's something at home. Maybe it's a financial partnership that you'll make with us. Maybe it's your time or, or your talents. I'm not sure what it is, but I just wonder what could God do in our midst? I'm so excited that we're part of a church that doesn't look at things like this and say, oh, that's just garbage. But we have a church community, a room of spiritual people who say, I wonder what God could do with this. If that's your desire today, I want to invite you to participate with us in the offering today. 
And maybe go home and think about it, pray about it, and look at your budget and say, what could God do with this? Maybe it's only 10 bucks a month, 50 bucks a month, 100, who knows? But I wonder what God could do with it. If you want to join us in changing lives, I want to invite you to consider that today as our ushers come forward to receive your offerings. And thank you for your generosity. This chest is full of memories Of gold and silver tears I'll give you more to own than all of this I'll give you more than you are still a child of innocence and I see you just the same your burdens couldn't win or lose a thing oh I'll tell you once again So your heart can rest in love So your breath down, just take it so Find your heart now whoa. You can trust in love again still be close to you when all your fears rain down I'll hold your hand a thousand times again I'll hold you as my own I will sing you songs of innocence Till the light of morning comes Till the rays of gold and honey cover you In the sweetness of the dawn Till you feel this love So your breath down, just take it so Find your heart now, whoa You can trust in love again
The chorus reminded me of a breath prayer I learned long ago and practiced often while driving in the crowded streets of Charlotte, North Carolina. It is, I breathe in love, I smile. <laughs> it really does make you a more cautious driver. So, breathe in love, smile out God's love to all of those around you. Let's pray together for a moment. God, for the gifts given this day in so many ways, we offer you our thanks. For the gifts given financially that make a difference in the life of this world, we give our thanks. For the gift of a smile offered at an unknown time, we give our thanks. May we see your smile of love each day in our lives. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you.